Welcome to Brainish English Stories. Sandy was very drunk. He was lying under a pretty bush, kind of like how he fell down earlier. He didn't know how long he'd been there and didn't care. He also didn't think about how long he'd stay there. Being drunk made him feel peaceful. Seeing a drunk person, especially Sandy, wasn't rare in Red Gulch. Earlier, someone made a funny tombstone for Sandy with a joke about whiskey, but no one bothered him much. A wandering mule and a dog came by. The dog even licked Sandy's boots and lay down beside him. The sun moved, and Sandy didn't move. Then a lady named Miss Mary, who taught at the nearby school, came along. She saw some nice flowers and crossed the road to get them, avoiding the dusty ground. Suddenly, she saw Sandy. She screamed a bit, but then got brave enough to get closer. She was careful, though, keeping some distance from Sandy. Sandy didn't move or say anything. Miss Mary kicked away the funny tombstone and muttered about men. Miss Mary stopped and, feeling brave from staying far away, asked Sandy if he needed anything. What's up? What's the matter? Sandy said loudly. Get up, you mean man, said Miss Mary, very angry now. Get up and go home. Sandy stood up, towering over her. He took a few steps forward and then stopped. Why should I go home? He asked seriously. Go and have a bath, Miss Mary said, looking at him with disapproval because he was so dirty. To her surprise, Sandy took off his coat and vest, threw them on the ground, kicked off his boots, and then ran wildly over the hill toward the river. Oh my goodness, he might drown, said Miss Mary, worried. Then, being inconsistent, she ran back to the schoolhouse and locked herself in. That evening, while having dinner with Mrs. Stidger, the blacksmith's wife, Miss Mary asked if her husband ever got drunk. Abner? Mrs. Stidger thought for a moment. Abner hasn't been drunk since the last election. Miss Mary wanted to ask if he liked lying in the sun when he was drunk, but she didn't want to explain why she was asking. So she just widened her eyes at Mrs. Stidger and changed the subject. The next day, she wrote to her friend in Boston, I think the drunk men in this town are the least annoying. I'm talking about the men, of course. The women are impossible. After a week, Miss Mary forgot about the incident, but she noticed that there were always fresh flowers, including azaleas, on her desk. This wasn't unusual because her students knew she liked flowers, but when she asked them about the azaleas, they all said they didn't know where they came from. A few days later, Johnny Stidger, whose desk was near the window, couldn't stop laughing. He said someone had been looking in the window. Angry, Miss Mary went outside to confront the intruder. She found Sandy, now sober and looking ashamed. Miss Mary was tempted to scold him, but she noticed that despite his past drinking, he looked friendly. He had a long, blonde beard that seemed untouched by a razor. So she didn't say anything mean, just accepted his apology with a superior attitude. When she went back inside, she looked at the azaleas differently and laughed, and the children laughed too. They were all unexpectedly happy. On a hot day not long after this, Two young boys stumbled at the school door with a pail of water from the spring. Miss Mary kindly took the pail and headed for the spring herself. At the bottom of the hill, someone suddenly took the pail from her. Miss Mary felt embarrassed and annoyed. If you carried more for yourself, 
she said sharply without looking at the person, you do better. When the person didn't say anything, she regretted her words. She thanked him warmly at the door, causing him to stumble. This made the children laugh again, and Miss Mary joined in, feeling a hint of color in her pale cheeks. The next day, a barrel mysteriously appeared by the door, filled with fresh spring water every morning. Miss Mary got special treatment from people in town. Profane Bill, who drove the stagecoach, always gave her the whole coach because he swore a lot while driving. Jack Hamlin, a gambler, once threw a bottle at someone who mentioned Miss Mary's name in a bar. Another parent, whose child's father was uncertain, admired Miss Mary from afar but never dared to come close. Despite these incidents, life in Red Gulch remained the same with its blue skies, bright sunshine, short evenings, and starry nights. Miss Mary liked walking in the calm woods. Maybe she thought, like Mrs. Stidger, that the pine smells were good for her lungs because her cough got better, and she walked more confidently. Maybe she learned from the patient trees their endless lessons. So, one day, she decided to have a picnic on Buckeye Hill and took the children with her. Being away from the noisy town, they found peace in the woods. The children played happily, and Miss Mary, forgetting her primness, ran ahead with them until they unexpectedly stumbled upon Sandy. They talked, apologized, and soon Sandy joined the picnic. The children liked him, and he showed them how to do things in the forest. After spending happy hours together, Sandy found himself lying at Miss Mary's feet, looking at her dreamily as she made flower wreaths. It seemed he had traded the intoxication of liquor for the intoxication of love. Miss Mary immediately recognized the mother of one of her students, Tommy. She felt a bit disappointed or maybe just uncomfortable, so she adjusted her clothes before inviting the woman in. The woman sat at the far end of a bench, leaving her colorful parasol by the door. The woman thanked Miss Mary for being kind to Tommy and said he was a good boy who deserved more attention than she could give him. She praised Miss Mary, saying there was no better teacher for Tommy. Miss Mary, sitting at her desk with a ruler in hand, listened quietly. The woman continued, explaining that she wasn't the best person to raise Tommy and that she had thought of sending him to school in San Francisco. But when she saw Miss Mary, she knew Tommy would be okay staying in town. She said Tommy loved Miss Mary and begged her to take him away from their troubled life and give him a better future. She confessed that Tommy's father was a gentleman, but she knew Tommy would eventually forget about her. She pleaded with Miss Mary to take Tommy with her, promising money and saying she could do whatever she wanted with him. She begged Miss Mary to save Tommy from their difficult life and make him pure and gentle like her. Then she revealed Tommy's father's name, Alexander Morton, also known as Sandy. As she spoke, the woman held Miss Mary's hand and fell to her knees, begging for mercy and pleading with Miss Mary not to turn her away. But Miss Mary didn't respond, and the woman feared she was being rejected. Miss Mary stood by the window as the daylight faded, her eyes fixed on the last colors of the sunset. The supplicant remained on her knees beside her, begging Miss Mary not to deny her request. Miss Mary watched as the last rays of sunlight touched her forehead and hands before disappearing. In the growing darkness, she finally spoke, agreeing to take the boy and asking the woman to send him to her that night. Overjoyed, 
The woman kissed the hem of Miss Mary's skirt and rose to leave. Miss Mary then asked if the man knew about her decision. When the woman said no, Miss Mary instructed her to go to him immediately and tell him that she had taken the child and that he must never try to see the child again, no matter where she took him. They walked to the door together, and as the woman left, Miss Mary briefly embraced her before closing and locking the door. The next morning, Profane Bill, the stagecoach driver, felt a great responsibility as Miss Mary boarded his stagecoach. When they reached a certain spot, Miss Mary instructed Tommy to get off and cut a branch from an azalea bush. Tommy did as he was told, and then the stage continued on its journey, closing the chapter on the story of Red Gulch. She noticed that Sandy's head was getting too hot in the sun. His hat was lying beside him, so she picked it up and put it over his face, feeling a bit scared. Then she left, but when she looked back, she saw Sandy sitting up and talking. Sandy believed that sunlight was good for him and that hats were silly. He thought only foolish people wore hats. His words were a bit unclear because of his drunkenness, but he mumbled something about the sun being nice.